So our Fleet MA version 2 still works, as you can see in the last class we added Spring Security and we created this page for logging and also page for registration. Today we are going to be talking about JPA auditing. Now, what is JPA auditing? JPA auditing is a way for you to track what is happening in your database tables automatically without having to write the codes. So JPA auditing will add fields to your tables like created by, updated by, created on, updated on. So these four fields will be added automatically. Now, the step-by-step -step we're going to be using for this tutorial is also right here in my website. So you can actually access this page, find the link to this page in the description of this video. And this is the step I'm going to be following right now to uh, add JPA updating to Fleet MS. And right now you can see we are in, in, in part 56. If you are joining for the first time, I recommend you subscribe to my channel so that you'll be able to follow this tutorial from beginning to end and you don't miss an update. So I recommend you simply click on the subscribe button below so that you, you, you subscribe. And if you have any challenges, feel free to let me know as well. And so let's go ahead to get started. Now the video for JPA auditing, more or less like a complete video for JPA auditing without for any application, not just Fleet MS, you can also find this uh, online where the video I made always comes out. So if you say JPA auditing, the first video that was going to come out when you go to video start here, you see the first video that comes out in Google is actually my video. And that is going to take you step by step how to implement JPA auditing with Spring Boot. But for now, we are going to be doing JPA auditing uh, for Flick MS. So let's do it step by step. First, let me just show you um, and this application is login. Okay, so let's connect to MySQL. So let me show you what is expected to be added because I actually did something like that. So if you go to, uh, for instance, I enter, let's say, um, MySQL minus U um, root minus P or dash P and I enter my password and I connect to my database, use fleet db and for instance I say select star from user you can see that we have some uh, additional fields added so these fields like created by created date, modified date they are added automatically and I'm going to be showing you how to do it right now Let's follow the steps, and the steps are right here. So the first thing you want to do, the first thing you want to do is to create an auditable class. Auditable class contains the, the fields that are going to be added to your tables. And then you are going to make any table that want, you want to audit is going to inherit from this auditable class. So I'm going to create this auditable class inside the models package. So the name is going to be auditable. Um, so this class is auditable and is going to be a mass a, a, a map super class and it's also going to be entity listener. A map super class means it doesn't have to, you don't need a table for this class because it doesn't hold um, data, it's only meant for creating subclasses so that classes can actually inherit from it. I'm going to say at map superclass and the next annotation which is at entity listener means that this is going to be listening for changes in the entities that inherit from it. So I'm going to simply say at entity listener and specify all of the auditing, auditing entity listener and the class. Okay, fine. Okay, so and this class is going to be an abstract class because we don't plan to instantiate this class. And we add a generic here, you, which is in this case it's going to be the user that made the change in the table. It could be the username, it could be the first name, it depends on what you want to do. So later we are going to replace the generic you with something else, possibly a string. 
So we need to add all these fields. So there are just four fields you have to add. So simply copy and add them now. The explanation of everything is there. So I'm not going to be reading it, but take some time to read and understand. Um, created date is coming from data annotation. Uh, last modify should be coming from the same place. Last modify date as well. Timestamp, uh, created constant. Oh, sorry, sorry, this is not right. So let's start with temporal import class. It should be Java to persistence, I think. Then they should be uh, Java uh, uh, Java .util. Now timestamp, you go to more actions and choose um, import static constant, and this is what you have. The nice thing we want to do now is to do the getters and the setters. So I'm going to simply generate the getters and the setters. So I'm going to right click and say generate and choose getter and select everything and say OK. And the same thing, I'm going to also right click and say, um, so it's going to be uh, generate, uh, it's going to be the setter and choosing everything and say OK. So we completed working on this class, which is auditable, which means that when we inherit this class from any object, these fields are going to be added to that table when that table is created by Hibernate. Now the next thing we want to do is to implement the auditor aware interface. So this is the interface that is going to grab or find the login user and use that login user to update uh, created by and modified by. So I'm going to create this uh, auditor aware. I could create it actually anywhere, but I think I should just create it. Um, create it inside the security folder. So I'm going to call it Spring Security Security Auditor Aware. Now the name you can use any name, but make sure it has to extend or implement auditor. Or the, or the door aware interface in this case it's going to be oh sorry it's going to be string right now we are using string because we want to store the username so if you want to store the user object or maybe combination of the username and the first name or the first name and the last name uh, well you can go that route but I think it's easier this way now we have to implement the method first, so I'm going to first implement the method get current auditor. Now, get current auditor now, I want it to return the username. So I'm going to paste the code that gets the, authentic, the current authentication object and get the username from the current authentication object. So it's not this. So it's going to be this code here, okay? So it's quite intuitive as you can see. So we have to first get the create an authentication object from the context and then from this authentication object we get the username by calling the get name method of the authentication object. And then we are going to return it else if there is nothing there we return an empty string as well. Finally, we are going to go to the main application class and then uh, as enable JPA auditing. So I'm going to go to my main application class, which is this one, and I'm simply going to say enable JPA auditing, right? And um, specify the auditor aware ref is equal to auditor aware. So this is going to be the beam. Uh, auditor aware. Okay, I think I'm. Right, okay, perfect. Now I'm going to create a beam that is going to actually uh, uh, return the audit hardware. So I'm going to simply copy this beam, so the beam and paste it right here. And prepare import, okay, perfect. So at this point, we are done, right? At this point, we are done. But one thing you can now do is that any class you want to inherit that you want to audit, simply extend, simply make that class extend uh, auditor, uh, auditable, right? So simply make that class auditable. Now, many of the classes in our application inherit from common objects. So if I go back to my application, for instance, 
Um, sorry, so maybe I can run into the I explain. I try to explain to you what I mean. When this application runs, there are many, many objects that actually inherit from common objects. For instance, let's say I go to fleet and go to fleet form, for instance, login and go to we have faithful types. This class now have description, only two fields. It, it inherits from from um, common objects, the same thing with vehicle mates, and so on. So it means that for all these classes to for me to update them, I simply have to expand, make common object extend auditable. So these classes that extend common object will now be auditable as well. Take some time to get your head around it. So let's take an example. If I go to fleet, for instance, and go to model, go to vehicle, vehicle type, you see it extends common object. If I go to vehicle model, you see it also extends common object. So instead of adding or detailable to this class is one after the other, I can simply make common object extend or detailable and all these other classes will simply be or detailable as well. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make common object to be or detailable. So let me go to make common object uh, or detailable. So let's see. Um, so where is common object? It should be in the parameters and models, common object and I'm going so I make common object as a standard table, in this case I'm specifying string. So now when we make some change now, we expect that the login username will be updated in that table. Let's try it and see. So if I go if I go now and run this application now, just to think I, I think it's also saved. We are going to add a data, uh, some data to a table, and then we are going to check our database to see that it adds updated by, updated on, and um, um, yeah. So let me uh, let me come here and let's assume we have this vehicle make, and I add vehicle make for instance, uh, vehicle make let's say um, GM, GM for instance, GM. And I say so. We have one vehicle make added. So let's go check the table now to see if it actually added the auditing information. So let's go to log into MySQL. This time I'm going to do it from the terminal. So I'm going to say MySQL minus u root and minus p uh, dash p. Enter my password. And I'm going to say use fleet db. And now let's select from vehicle main. So I'm going to say select start from vehicle make. Oh, sorry, sorry, error. Now you can see that we have a vehicle added here at number two gm. The description and details, but you also see that the date last modified, last modified by, created by, and created by, uh, on is also added. So, this is how auditing works. So, any class you want to audit, simply make it extend auditable. For instance, if I go to client now, so this client now I can simply make it extend auditable and automatically this class will contain this additional field that help me to audit my uh, table. So this is a much we can take. This has been done in Fleet ML version 1, so you can take some time to review it. I also showed you online where I did a full tutorial on this uh, JP auditing. You can see the tutorial here. Then also do this, have the step by step for all the code right here on my website. Check the description for this. We are almost rounding up with Fleet ML version 2. Get ready for Fleet ML version 3, where we are going to be talking about PostgreSQL. Node.js and Angular Fleet MS version 3 is actually the big thing coming. So make sure you understand this before, uh, I think in two weeks we should be moving over to Fleet MS version 3. We are talking about Angular front end, middleware should be Node.js and database here will be PostgreSQL. However, in the next part we are now going to be talking about role based authentication. We are going back to Spring Security again and see how we can implement role-based authentication and then we talk about deployment to different platforms and then we round up. 
So I, I want to thank you for viewing. Please remember to subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button and activate notifications so that you don't miss any update from me. And if you have any challenges whatsoever, please leave me a comment and remember you can buy me a coffee to support my work. You can see a link to buy me a coffee on my website, for instance, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you so you can know you know what I'm talking about. So if I go to, for instance, uh, um, let's see. So if I go to my website, let's say kind if you use the com slash spring boots, you'll see a link. I think there should be a link to buy me a copy and you can always buy me a copy. Okay, this doesn't show up, but I think it should. Okay, let me just go from here. So if you go from here, let's see. Uh, yeah, so you see the link, buy me a coffee. Click on link, you can buy me a coffee, 15. Whatever amount of coffee you want to buy me, that would be great. So I want to stop here. Uh, thank you for viewing. I want to give you a thumbs up if you've come this far. Please don't give up. Sometimes it may be hard. Please try to reach out to me and I'm going to give you the needed assistance. In the next part, we now talk about role-based authentication on uh, Spring Security. I remain kind to the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.